In today's video, we are going to use a ball nose tool to create a fillet tool path. This is using a three axis tool path in SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. So we've opened up our part and you'll see that there's tool paths already associated with this part. So we can simulate the program to see what we've got. So we'll choose simulate tool path and play through this. So as we can see, everything's been machined, except for if we use the show difference option, we can see in blue that the fillet is left over. So it's just the fillet around the outside edge of this part. So we're going to use a Z-level tool path in order to create this fillet. So we're gonna come back into our feature tree and we need to add in a three axis feature in order to get this tool path. So I'm going to right click on the setup that I want to add this to and I'm going to add in my multi-surface feature. Inside the multi-surface feature window, I'm going to choose all displayed as my feature type and select everything on the screen. And then I'm going to choose my strategy as area clearance with the Z level. The reason I'm choosing this is because I just want that Z level tool path and none of my strategies have been created. So we'll go ahead and choose the okay button. We'll generate the operation plan for this multi-surface feature. And now we've got an area clearance and a Z level. The area clearance isn't needed. We don't need to rough any material out because this part has been machined already. So we'll go ahead and delete the area clearance tool path. And now we've got the Z level tool path left. So we'll go ahead and edit this tool path. Choose edit definition. And the very first thing that I always want to do inside the tool path is make sure that I change the tool first. So you'll notice I didn't generate the tool path right after I generated the operation plan. So I want to change the tool first. I'm going to go into my tool crib and I've got an eighth inch ball nose tool in here. So I'm just going to choose that tool. So I'll choose select. And yes, I want to use the corresponding holder. So now I've got a small ball nose tool that I want to use to cut this fillet. The next thing that I want to do is I want to preview this tool path. So let's see what it actually looks like and what we need to fix on the tool path. So we're going to go ahead and preview that tool path and we should see the Z level tool being added in. So you can see that it's only got one tool path that goes around the outside of the fillet and it's machining a whole bunch of features on the inside that we don't want it to machine. So one way to fix this would be to come into our advanced tab. And inside the advanced tab of every three axis tool path, you'll see that there's this automatic contain area section. And what this allows us to do is contain the tool path to different areas of the part. So if we haven't placed a containment area on the part, then it's going to automatically use a contain area based on what we've chosen in the drop down. So this one's currently set to all silhouette. So you can kind of see in the image what it's going to select. So it's kind of internal features. If we choose the stock option, you can see that everything within the stock is then chosen. So that's what we're going to choose. And then I want my tool condition to go past the outside edge of that stock material. So I'm going to go past and then preview. So we should definitely see more tool path on this, but again, it's going to be creating a lot of tool path that we don't necessarily need. So now that we've got the automatic contain area, selected we're going to come back into the z level tab and inside the z level tab you'll notice that under the limit section here instead of limiting where we want our first and our last cut to come from we can actually limit our tool path by a slope so we can actually say i want to go from zero degrees to a max angle of something under 90 degrees so that we're not cutting all the straight walls on the part so zero to maybe 89 degrees we can go ahead and preview that tool path and we should remove all of the flat walls on this part. So you can see it's not actually machining down the walls anymore. This wall on the inside of this pocket is still being machined and that's because it's a tapered wall. So that's why that's showing up. So we've also got the tool path going into some of these holes on the part. If we go into the advanced tab again, under the advanced tab, you'll see there's a section called avoid small profiles. What we can do with this section is we can actually tell it to stay out of multiple different profiles based on a certain diameter. So if I click on the outside diameter of one of these holes, you can see in the bottom right hand corner of my screen that that's 0.297 inches in diameter. 
So I'm going to say everything under 0.3 inches, I want the tool pass to stay out of. So again, I'll go ahead and preview that and it should stay out of all of the holes. So the next thing I might want to do is actually use an avoidance area on the tool path to keep it out of this section in the center. So we'll go ahead and press OK on the tool path. We'll right click on the Z level tool path and we'll go ahead and add in an avoidance area. So I'll choose a new avoid area. And then I'm just going to make sure that my edge selection is on constant depth loop. And I'll just loop around this profile here. We'll choose OK and regenerate our tool path. So again, we're basically keeping everything out of the center of this profile. So there's the Z-level tool path now. And again, this is just creating a tool path around where we want that fillet to be cut. The nice thing about this tool path, the Z-level tool path, is if we had fillet at different heights with different sizes, uh, this tool path would still machine all of those for us. So it's a really nice option for creating fillet features. If I want to go even further, I can go in and change the actual cut depths. So if I come into my Z level tab, you'll see that this is the cut amount that I'm currently using. So I can make that even smaller and see that I get more tool path in there. So again, you can adjust this until you have this exactly what you're looking for in order to get that fillet. The next step in this process would be to create a strategy for this feature. In that case, we can use the strategy or the tool path for multiple different features in the future.